The idea of the world's ocean circulation and really the idea of thermohaline circulation um, coupled with surface circulation got a real boost from a man named Wally Broker, a very famous scientist who I had an opportunity to meet and talk with when I was a postdoc at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. But in the 1980s, 1983 I believe it was, um, let's see if we, I didn't give you the figures, the dates for that, but we talk about it in the book. He drew a simple diagram that's now been called the global conveyor belt. And I'll show you that in just a minute. In that diagram, he linked what's going on at the surface with what's going on deep. And it's really the kind of thing that he might have just sketched on the back of an envelope while uh, having a beer somewhere or eating at a restaurant or something. Um, and he sent it off to a magazine and it got published and it's now the mantra really in some sense of climate change scientists and those kinds of things. You probably, if you watched the movie Day After Tomorrow and even An Inconvenient Truth, this global conveyor belt where waters of the surface are coupled to uh, waters of the deep and water just moves between the surface and the deep. This global conveyor belt was a prominent part of the day after tomorrow uh, and also an inconvenient truth. In the day after tomorrow it was the melting of ice in the Arctic that put a lid on the thermohaline circulation and shut it down so that warm water was no longer coming up the Gulf Stream. Uh, Gulf Stream water was no longer reaching the North Atlantic and the North Atlantic was plunged into this extremely icy situation and Jake Gyllenhaal was in danger but Dennis Quaid was on his way to save him. Um, that whole thing caused by a shutdown of the global conveyor belt. Inconvenient Truth also alluded to it in a scientific way as one of the possible ironic consequences of global warming and the melting of the Arctic shutting down the global conveyor belt. Some people are worried that it might plunge Europe and North America, at least the East Coast of North America, into an ice age. Well, it really is, as it turns out, a gross oversimplification and the originator of it is the, the first one to point out in many ways. It's really oversimplified. What this image of the world ocean, this global ocean conveyor belt, gave us, most importantly, was a linkage between the surface circulation shown in red here and the deep circulation shown in blue. Broker focused mostly on the North Atlantic Ocean, but here we see that warm salty water mixing with colder water from the Arctic, warm salty water from the Gulf Stream, mixing with colder water from the Arctic Ocean basins forms this driving force. It actually forms North Atlantic deep water that travels through the Atlantic Ocean into the Indian Ocean through the sort of Antarctic pathway and eventually makes its way back up to the surface in the North Pacific Ocean and then these, these surface waters through the South, through the Pacific gyres are returned through the Drake Passage and ultimately this water gets back up into the North Atlantic again. That's the idea of the conveyor, that water sinks here, travels throughout the world ocean, comes back to the surface and eventually makes its way back to its starting point. That's the idea of the conveyor belt. Now that idea as a concept and as a, a simple model is important because again it stresses the linkage between surface and deep circulation and it gives us a working model for the world ocean circulation. Unfortunately, it leaves out a lot of details and, and it's led to this idea, well, if we stop it here, the whole ocean will stop. And a lot of people debate that, some people doubt it. And in simplifying it, oversimplified it, and it's led to some rather extravagant conclusions, day after tomorrow being one example of that. Um, so it's been good in that it's emphasized something that's important to oceanographers. It's been bad in that it's made it too simple and made people extract conclusions from this oversimplification that probably won't be borne out by further study. A more recent attempt to tie together the world ocean circulation uh, was put forward and this is based on that. Um, the reference is in the book. It escapes me at the moment. But in this model, the Antarctic and circulation around the Southern Ocean is key to controlling, you think about choke points, 
but it's key to controlling the circulation of the other basins. So this has an Antarctic focus, cold water produced in the Antarctic basins, travel along, in this case, in the North Pacific Ocean, where they're mixed up. This is where the idea of the three layers of the bottom and the intermediate and the surface come, um, come from or play some importance. So here, this water uh, reaches intermediate depths and eventually reaches the surface. Here we have the Indonesian through flow as an important rate controlling factor or choke point. Here we have the Drake Passage as an important Drake Passage being uh, here. It's hard to see in this particular figure, but because if we don't really show South America being also an important controlling factor in the exchanges. Here's North Atlantic deep water being formed and moving out through the rest of the ocean. But again, the details aren't going to be so important for us, but just again, and having an understanding that through conceptual models and then putting mathematics behind this, we're attempting to understand how the world ocean circulation works and really how the world ocean works as a system. So this coupled surface and deep circulation, oceanographers now recognize that there's a connection between the two and the bottom line really is we're really just, we've only just begun. It's a big complicated ocean and as such there's ample opportunities to explore it and discover it and if you're attracted to things like these, the physics of the ocean and mathematics and modeling and if this gets you excited, because it kind of gets me excited although I'm more tending towards the biological sides of things, um, it's fascinating to think how we can figure this all out. It's a challenge for some of you out there that might want to be oceanographers or who might be thinking about applying your creative abilities, your mathematical abilities, your analytical abilities to an understanding of the ocean. Well, like all chapters, we have exploration activities. We also have some resources and I also suggest you check out the open ocean, the Blue Planet open ocean video. This video is really a great example of how ocean currents and ocean properties create habitats for organisms and influence food webs in the world ocean. Well, as always, I hope you've enjoyed our lecture. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Have a great day.